Hey friends, we have some big news. Visual regression testing with Headless Chrome and Playwright is coming to Checkly. If you want to make visual regression testing part of your synthetic monitoring, this video is for you. Let's go. As you may know, Checkly's browser checks enable you to run your Playwright tests on a schedule from around the world to get notified when you have issues in production. As an example, I have here a browser check that monitors the Checkly homepage from Frankfurt, from Stockholm, and in case something is off with the Checkly homepage, I will receive an alert. Let me show you how you can make visual regression testing part of your browser checks. To get started right from the Checkly UI, hit the plus button and choose to create a new browser check. Then you have the option to choose from one of our predefined templates. And look at this, here we have a template for visual regression testing with snapshots. Let's apply this one. In the browser check editor, we now have a test case that already includes visual regression testing. It navigates the headless browser to this environment variable that's called environment URL. And if not defined, the browser will be navigated to checklyhq.com. And the key to visual regression testing with Checkly is playwrights to have screenshot assertion. When you call to have screenshot, Playwright will usually look for a local copy of a screenshot and will take another screenshot to then compare the two images and fail if there are too many visual differences. And we made this workflow that usually required a local file system work with the Checkly Cloud. The first problem I now have is that checklyhq.com will not have any visual differences when I run multiple Playwright tests. So let's update this URL to use our good old friend Hacker News. What I now have to do is I have to create this initial image, this golden file that will be used for future image comparisons. And as you see it here already, if you want to update these base files, these golden files, you have to hit this button and you have to update or create your golden files. So let's run it. After running this browser check, we created now these golden files and the snapshots that will be used for future visual regression. If you want to inspect these screenshots that were just taken, you can now press this icon. And here we see the screenshot that we just took. Additionally, we provide quick previews when you scroll down in the sidebar. And here we have the golden file, the snapshot of Hacker News that we just took. And because the entries in Hacker News are always changing, let's find out what happens when we now run this browser check again. And here we have it. Our newly taken screenshot has 22,000 different pixels. So let's find out what changed. After running this browser check again, we see that the entries on Hacker News, of course, were dancing around, which led to visual changes on the page. And we can now see here in this diff view what pixels changed. We can have a look at the actual image. This was the image that we just took by running this browser check again. And when we click Expected, this is the golden file. This is the reference image that we took initially. And if you want to inspect in detail what changed, you can always drag this slider around and you can see the pages before and after. So with this single line to have screenshot, we just detected visual changes on Hacker News. And I think this is already pretty, pretty cool. But what would happen if we now create this browser check and run it on a schedule? We would have constant alerts telling us that something changed on Hacker News. And this wouldn't be very helpful because what we want to detect is when the layout changes or something crucial on the website happens. We usually don't care about dynamic data. And to work around these problems in your synthetic monitoring, you can leverage the mask property that is available for the to have screenshot method. I already inspected the HTML of Hacker News. So what we define here is that we're locating all the rows in the Hacker News page and we're defining that we want to mask them out. So let's find out how this looks like and do another browser check run that updates these visual base images. And when this comes back, we can see that all the entries are masked. And when this browser check, when this Playwright test runs on the schedule, we have a non-flaky browser check that will not give me unnecessary alerts. And that's what we all should aim for, right? Not getting alerted at night. If you have Playwright experience, you might now wonder, now that we have to have screenshot support, do we also have support for to match snapshot? And let me tell you, yes, we do. In this example, we extract all the headlines from Hacker News and we form a string that we then will write to disk or we will write to a golden file that is called all headlines txt and when we then run future browser checks we will always compare these two strings these two text files and see if there were any changes 
But right now, this would only make our browser check flaky again. So let's remove that again and finally create our new browser check. And with this, our Playwright test case is now running on a schedule. And if there would be any visual regressions, we could inspect the diff as we've just seen in the editor there too. And if you're following what we do at Checkly and what we do believe in, you might now ask, hey, Stefan, does visual regression testing work with monitoring as code and be Checkly CLI? And of course it does. So let's head over to my editor. Here we have an HN spec TS file that lives in a Checkly CLI project. It includes a Checkly config TS and it has the Checkly CLI already installed as a dependency. If you want to learn more about monitoring this code with the Checkly CLI, there will now be a little bubble that will give you an explain on how you can test and deploy your entire monitoring setup from the command line. But let me give you a quick tour. We have a similar Playwright test case here. It navigates to Hacker News, it takes a screenshot and masks out all the rows. And additionally, it also screenshots the first row on top the orange bar to check these four visual regressions. Now that I have a Checkly CLI project, I can head over to my terminal and I can say npx Checkly tests and I define hn here to only run files that include hn. When I now run this, it happens that Checkly will parse the project and now it's running this file that is on my local machine in the Checkly infrastructure. And it's failing. Why is that? When we look into the logs, we see that, well, this is a brand new file in my Checkly CLI project and there are no golden files yet. Luckily, you can create and update these from the command line too. So when I now go to the command line and say npx checkly test hn and I append the update snapshots flag, this now runs in the Checkly infrastructure and Checkly will create these golden images for me here right now on the fly. And this test run of our future browser check running on a schedule now passed. But let me show you something truly magical. When I now inspect the files on my project, there's now a new directory that includes these reference images, these golden files. So when we now have a look, these are the screenshots that I just instructed to take when I have run Checkly test. And when I now run this browser check again here using Checkly test, these images on my machine are the reference files that are used for visual regression testing. And this is pretty cool. But let me prove to you that this actually works. Let's find this image here on my Mac. So reveal and finder. And I will now just start messing with this base image, with this golden file. So let me just add a random rectangle here somewhere like so. So and I will hit save and what we now have is that we just changed the reference image that is sitting on my local machine. So what happens now if I run Checkly test again? Checkly test has now a failed visual regression because it detected that the local image that I have here, our golden file, was not matching the result that this browser check run created. Here we have 25,000 different pixels. To inspect what the actual visual differences were, you can always pass the record flag. This is a Checkly test session and this will now give us a URL so that we can inspect the visual changes or the visual differences that made our browser check fail. So when we now again have this failed browser check, we have here a detailed summary of what happened in this browser check. And when we inspect this, we have here our HN spec TS file that I have running on my local machine and when we go in here, we see that, hey, there are 25,000 different pixels. And when we look at the diff, look at our lovely square. To revert the changes, all I will do is I will go back here and I will say again, update snapshots. So this will update the images that are taken as a reference for visual regression testing and will remove my lovely little square again. And here we go. Let's test this browser check a final time. So let's do npx checkly test without updating the base images. Let's run it. Here we go. So again, this runs now in the checkly infrastructure powered by the file on machine. And this looks good. And with this, what I now can do is I can call npx checkly deploy and make this test session, this test run here and transform it into global monitoring. So I deployed now the files of my Checkly project. Let's head over to the Checkly dashboard and 
here we have it. Here we have HN spec TS. This is the code that I just synced up or deployed from my local machine. And this is now up and running and does visual regression testing on a schedule and it can update it and deploy it right from my machine or in CI CD workflows. And I honestly think that this flow for visual regression testing using the Checkly CLI is pretty, pretty magical. So in summary, by adding a single line, a single assertion to have screenshot or to match snapshot, you can now add visual regression testing to your synthetic monitoring. And you can guarantee that there are no small visual changes or faulty CSS or some mistakes in production that harm user experience. And that's it with new features today. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. And if you have any comments or questions, drop into the Checkly Slack community. We are a lovely bunch, I promise. And with that, I will talk to you very, very soon again about new Checkly features.